Lesson 6.10 use properties of addition to add fractions. We can use properties of addition to help us add fractions with unlike denominators. We can use the commutative property to rearrange the fractions so that the fractions with like denominators are next to each other. And we can use the associative property to group fractions with like denominators. The commutative property of addition states that when the order of two add-ins is changed, the sum is the same. So 2 plus 3 is equal to 5, and 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. It doesn't matter the order of the add-ins. The associative property of addition, also called the grouping property, states that when the grouping of the add-ins is changed, the sum is the same. Here we have 1 plus 2 in parentheses, which is 3, we add 3, and that's equal to 6. And if we group the 2 plus 3 together first, we would add in the parentheses first, that's a 5 plus 1, that's equal to 6. It didn't matter how we grouped it, the sum is the same. By regrouping the fraction add-ins, we can add compatible numbers using mental math. And using properties of addition, we can add fractions with common denominators first. Here we have 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 half. It's equal to 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 third. They're equal to 1 and 1 third. We add the half and the half together first to equal one whole. Then we add the 1 third. Using the associative property, if we had the one-half plus one-third in parentheses, we would move the grouping around the one-half plus one-half here. We group the like denominators together. The order stays the same, but the grouping changes. So we have one-half plus one-half, which is one whole. Then we add the one-third. We have one and one-third. The associative property cannot be used for subtraction because it can change the minuend into a subtrahen, and that won't work. We have 6 minus 4 in parentheses plus 1, that is a 2 plus 1. If we changed the grouping so that it was around the 4 plus 1, we would have a 6 minus 5, that equals 1. This side equals 3, and this side equals 1. And that's why it's called the associative property of addition. It does not work for subtraction. Using the commutative property and the associative property, here we have 2 and 5 sevenths plus 1 and 1 third. It's in parentheses, so we're supposed to do this first. And then we need to add 1 and 1 seventh. So we first use the commutative property to put fractions with like denominators next to each other. So these two add-ins will swap places, and it'll be like this. This add-in is now over here, and this fraction add-in is now over here. Then we use the associative property to group fractions with like denominators together. So we move the grouping symbols, the parentheses, to be around the 2 and 5 sevenths and the 1 and 1 seventh because they both have a 7 denominator. And we can use mental math to add the fractions with like denominators. We have 5 sevenths and 1 seventh, that's 6 sevenths. So we have 3 and 6 sevenths. Then we can add the remaining add-ins using common denominators. We have 1 and 1 third plus 3 and 6 sevenths. We have a denominator 3 and a denominator 7, and we could multiply these denominators together to get a common denominator of 21. 3 times 7 is 21, so we need to multiply the numerator times 7. We have 1 and 7 21sts. 7 times 3 is 21, so we need to multiply 6 times 3. That's equal to 18 21sts. So now we have 1 and 7 21sts plus 3 and 18 21sts. We add the numerators and get 25 21sts. We add the whole numbers, we get a 4. So we have 4 and 25 21sts. But this is a fraction greater than 1. This is equal to 4 plus 21 21sts plus 4 21sts. We can see that there's a 21 21st that we can pull out of here. 
4 plus the same numerator and denominator. This is equal to a 1. We have 4 plus 1. That's a 5. We have 5 and 4 21sts. And we know our answer is in simplest form when the only common factor for the numerator and denominator is a 1, and this is in simplest form. If you missed learning how to make equivalent fractions and common denominators, it's linked in the description in video 6.4. And we touched on some simplest form in video 6.1. What happens if we use the associative property first? Well, we'll need to use the associative property two times and the commutative property once. If we have one-half plus one-third plus one-half, and these are in parentheses, and we use the associative property first to change the grouping, we now have them grouped around the first two addends. Then we'll need to swap places for commutative property so that the two denominators are next to each other. Then we'll have to change the grouping again and use the associative property a second time to group the like denominators. So it's better to do the commutative property first. You switch their place and then you switch the grouping. Sometimes by changing the order in regrouping, we will be able to add fractions without needing to give them common denominators because two of the fraction add-ins will equal a whole number. We have 2 and 1 tenth plus 3 and 1 fifth in parentheses, and we need to add 1 and 9 tenths. If we use the commutative property and change their order, we swap their places, we now have this. And then, using the associative property, we can group 2 and 1 tenth plus 1 and 9 tenths. 1 tenth plus 9 tenths is 10 tenths. That makes one whole. That means we have one whole, two, three, four. We have four whole. We add the three and one-fifth. Using mental math, we have seven and one-fifth. Sanjay used 12 and a half feet of ribbon to make tails for three kites. He used four and a half feet for the first kite and four and two-fifths feet for the second kite. How much ribbon did Sanjay use for the third kite? So we're going to let the variable f equal feet of ribbon for the third kite. We have four and a half plus four and two fifths plus f for the third kite, the feet for the third kite, and it's equal to 12 and a half. And we can work backwards. We can say f, the feet for the kite, is equal to the total 12 and a half minus the four and a half feet that he used for the first kite minus the four and two-fifths feet he used for the second kite. Twelve and a half minus four and a half, well, that's just eight. We could use mental math for that. Then we have eight minus four and two-fifths. We can rename the eight as a seven plus a five-fifths. Now we can take away two-fifths from it. We get three-fifths, and seven minus four is three. That means f is equal to three and three-fifths feet. That is the length of ribbon he used for the third kite. Emma walked a half mile, then a half mile, and three-fourths mile to the store from her house. And Tala walked three-fourths mile, a half mile, and three-fourths mile to the store. Who walked the farthest and by how much more? So we think we can add the distances they walked, then use subtraction to find their difference. Emma was one half plus one half, that's one whole, plus three fourths, that's one and three fourths miles. That was easy. Tala was three fourths plus one half plus three fourths. We can swap their places using the commutative property, so now we have three-fourths plus three-fourths with common denominators that we add first. That's six-fourths. Now we have one-half plus six-fourths. One-half is equal to two-fourths, so we have two-fourths plus six-fourths. That's eight-fourths, and eight-fourths is equal to two miles. We take the two miles that Tala walked and we subtract the one and three-fourths miles that Emma walked. Some of you can use mental math and figure out the answer right away. 
And we can turn this 2 into a 1 and a 4 fourths. Same numerator and denominator is equal to 1. We have 1 and a 1, that's the 2. Now we can do 4 minus 3, which is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. It's just 1 fourth mile more that Tala walked. So remember, the order of the add-ins change using the commutative property of addition. The grouping of the add-ins change using the associative property of addition. Now we're finished with chapter 6, and we're going to move on to chapter 7, which is all about multiplying fractions. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you stay well and safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.